Did you know that DHS is proposing a new rule for the public charge ground of inadmissibility? If you don't, keep watching the video. If you're applying for a green card within the United States or outside the United States and want to come into the United States, this should concern you. What is this new rule all about? Why are they proposing, why are they even proposing a new rule? And how is this going to affect your application? Today, I'm going to answer all of these questions. I'm Andre Major, immigration attorney and an immigrant myself. And if you find this video helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel and checking out our other videos. Let's get into it. <clears throat> What's the history of the public charge rule? Well, it was created in 1882 to deny visa application of anyone who would likely become a public charge. But the law didn't define who or what a public charge is. So a public charge became anyone who would become dependent on the U.S. government after gaining immigrant status. The public charge rule has been enacted <clears throat> more as a guiding principle than an actual rule of law. Since 1999, DHS, the Department of Homeland Security, has made public charge decisions depending on whether you receive public cash assistance for income maintenance or receive long-term health care at the U.S. government's expense. This means that you can be a public charge if you have ever used Medicaid or another public program that covered your long-term health care, or if you receive temporary assistance for needing families, otherwise known as welfare, or supplemental security income, or state or local assistance of what is known as general assistance at the time that you filed your green card. Since 1999, only permanent residents and US citizens were able for these benefits. So it was unlikely that a green card applicant would be denied for using services that they couldn't even get. The Trump administration proposed changes to the existing public charge rule in 2018, specifically on September 28th, 2018, the US Department of Homeland Security proposed a new public charge rule. Then on August 14, 2019, it published a final rule and the new public charge rule went into effect on February 24th, 2020. Now there's been litigation about it. And in other videos, we discussed what that litigation was. And in fact, they actually stopped that rule. But what changed under the Trump administration's public charge rule? Why was there litigation? What were the issues? Well, let's talk about it. Under the new rule, the Trump administration expanded that criteria for becoming a public charge. Instead of just assessing whether an applicant like you had relied on U.S. government assistance in the past, the new rule went beyond asking if a green card or visa applicant was likely to rely on government benefits in the future. So it didn't just look back. It also looked at what you might happen in the future. If you were found to likely receive benefits in the future, they would deny your application. To assess likelihood of future benefits, immigration officers became considering things like age. If you were too young, you might be disqualified. If you were too old, you might be disqualified because you might not be yet of working age. Medical conditions and how those influence your ability to work. So you needed to be able to show that you had secured private health insurance in advance of coming to the United States. Family size. The larger your household, the more likely you would become or be considered a public charge. Your ability to speak English and your past work in education also became a factor in assessing whether you could get a job as an immigrant. So, and for the first time, DHS was checking credit scores, credit history, and financial liability to determine applicants' financial status. Basically, it became more of a wealth test and a work eligibility test. If you're wealthy, the fact that you're not working was not a problem. If you weren't wealthy, well, what was your ability to work? If you were too young or if you were too old, if you didn't speak the language, if you didn't have much education or you had poor health condition, 
you might not have good work eligibility, and then you might need government assistance. As part of the rule change, the scope of public benefits resulting in a denial on public charge grounds was also expanded. What do I mean? In addition to receiving welfare and long-term subsidized healthcare, using one or more of public benefits for 12 points made you a public charge and thus ineligible for a green card. And what we mean by points is every month that you received one of the following programs counted as a point. And if you had more than 12 points, you were disqualified. What programs? Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program or food stamps, Section 8 Housing Assistance, any federal public housing subsidiaries or rental assistance, Medicaid in a non-emergency, except for pregnant women and mothers who saw the doctor within 60 days of birth, people with disabilities, and children under the age of 21. One point is assigned for each month of benefit. So if you received food assistance and housing assistance for six months, that would be 12 points and you would be disqualified for a period of three years. So these newly benefits are ones that non-citizens could legally take advantage of before the new rule. So non-citizens who had used benefits which were allowed for non-green card holders in the past were now being punished for having followed the legal process, used them lawfully, and now being prevented to get your green card. DHS did not penalize children or spouses of green card applicants, however. What is the new requirement concerning finances under Trump's rule? The new public charge rule added this requirement for personal financial resources. To meet this requirement, you had to fill out a form I-944, officially named Declaration of Self-Sufficiency, and it had to be filed along with your affidavit of support, meaning in addition to all the eight other forms you need to file out when you're applying for your green card application, this was one more. It meant that providing green card spa sponsors had enough, enough financial resources wasn't enough. You now had to show your own personal income threshold. Applicants' household income had to be at least 125 to 250% of the federal poverty, poverty guidelines. The government strongly preferred those whose income was 250% of the guidelines, meaning double the minimum poverty test. If your income was double, you would, you're less likely to be a public charge. For applicants from low-income immigrant families who previously only had to rely on their sponsor to meet the income requirements, this was tough. For people who, now, this is true whether you're applying for your green card into the United States or you're applying for your green card from outside the United States. From inside the U.S., you had to file Form I-944. From outside the United States, you had to fill out Form the uh, Department of State Form DS-5540, Public Charge Questionnaire. Same questions, just different forms because they're different agencies. And consular officers would review the questionnaire to make sure immigrant visa applicants had not used any public benefits in the past. For both adjustment of status, meaning inside the United States, and consular process, those outside the United States, green card applicants had to jump through more hoops than had existed before. Now, let's talk about the new proposed rule. Not what Trump did, but what the Department of Homeland Security is suggesting now. So the Department of Homeland Security is proposing how to decide whether someone who is applying for a green card is likely at any time to become a public charge. In a nutshell, they want to change the phrase in the rule, likely at any time to become a public charge, to likely to become primarily dependent on the government for, subs for subsistence. Before I move on, if you're still watching, go ahead and hit the like button below and click the bell icon to keep you updated about other immigration related content. Okay, let's go back to why the DHS is proposing this rule. The change is proposed because they want to avoid unnecessary burdens on applicants, adjudicators, and benefits granting agencies. And they want to avoid situations that may jeopardize public health because immigrants are afraid of accepting 
public benefits that they're eligible to receive. For example, Medicare, medical care, children's immunizations, basic nutrition, or treatment of medical conditions. Under this proposed rule, a non-citizen would be considered a public charge only if they are likely at any time to become solely dependent on government assistance or only. Under the proposed rule, DHS would only considering the following services for public charge purposes, supplemental security income, <clears throat> cash assistance for income maintenance under the temporary assistance for needy families program, state, tribal, territorial, and local cash assistance for income maintenance and long-term institutionalization a government expense. DHS would not consider non-cash benefit programs like food nutrition assistance programs, such as the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, SNAP, or commonly known as food stamps, the Children's Health Insurance Program, or the most Medicaid benefits except for long-term institutionalization at government expense, and housing benefits and transportation vouchers. So none of those four categories, SNAP, you know, food program, children's health insurance, Medicaid programs, except for long-term care, and housing benefits or transportation, none of those would count. Additionally, DHS would not consider disaster assistance received under the Stafford Act, benefits received via a tax credit or deduction, or social security, government pension, or other earned benefits. Most non-citizens who are eligible for public benefits are not subject to the public charge ground of inadmissibility under the proposed rule. Moreover, the proposed rule would not affect lawful permanent residents. Basically, if you're a green card holder already, you're not affected by this rule unless you leave the United States and you're, and you're outside the US for more than six months. Then you're subject to readmission and you then would be subject to the public charge analysis. The proposed rule includes the following categories of non-citizens exempt from the public charge rule. So if you're a refugee, asylee, temporary protective status, special immigrant juvenile, T and U visas, or a VAWA self-petitioner, you don't need to worry about the public charge. If you receive benefits while you're in one of these programs, you're not gonna be disqualified if you later file for your green card. In case you are disqualified, the proposed rule also recommends a waiver process to overcome a finding of a public charge. It All in all, it's a comprehensive approach. Now, the DHS proposal will be subject to public comment in the next two months through regulations.gov under docket number USCIS-2021-0013. What do you think about this ruling? Be sure to comment on your reactions down below and let us know. I hope I've shared information about this public charge. If you learned a lot from this video, please feel free to like and share it with other people who might be thinking about applying for their green card. And if you have any ideas for future videos, go ahead and let me know in the comments below. You can call us today if you want to discuss your case or you need help on your, uh, on your immigration journey. We will let you know if and when we and how we can help you. Remember, every case is different and we will take your money if we can't help you. Until next time, stay healthy and be well.